Good morning. Good morning. I hope this finds you well. The rain has passed through and we are promised glorious sunshine, which I think is, is working on it. I don't think we're there yet, but I think I think it's working on it. I hope today finds you well. Morning, Barbara. Excellent. Right, that, that means I know it's working. This is always good. Morning, Barbara. Right, this morning, uh, the first thing to say is there may be some strange noises off. We are looking after Isla. Isla is our grand dog. Um, because Chris and Lucy are on honeymoon. Um, so we have her for a fortnight. Um, which means that having spent a week calmly um, readjusting my life back into ministry, I have two weeks of it not quite working properly. Because we don't normally have a dog. Um, <laughs> And I've also got to go to Dad's today to take him for an eye appointment. So, which is why I'm in civvies. Um, so, <laughs> morning, Cathy. Um, so, yes, yes, it, 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 isn't it? Isn't it lovely how how we have these grand plans of how life are going to work out, and then and then there's what actually happens. Um, and when you throw Lois's news into the mix, that sort of um adds to it really doesn't it but we don't have to worry about that until after Christmas not much anyway right morning prayer morning prayer I'm going to use Psalm 71 but I'm only going to use verses 14 to 20 otherwise we'll be here all morning so Psalm 71 14 to 20 and Acts 22, 12 to 21, which again is not actually the whole of the morning prayer New Testament reading, but it's the bit I'm going to do because likewise, I'll never get to dad's basically. Um, sorry to curtail things, but um, I think it should work quite well anyway. And I've silenced the phones. So that hopefully when the wasp nest people phone me up or text me, we've got a wasp's nest over the altar at St Mary's, just to add to the excitement yesterday morning. <sighs> anyway, right. Let's take a moment of quiet and we will focus on the fact that we are in God's presence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we awake, refreshed from the depths of sleep open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god forever the night has passed and the day lies open before us so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So as I said, Psalm 71, but beginning at verse 14, so just going to read 14 to 20, and then um, use the prayer at the end of the psalm. Acts 
As for me, I will hope continually and will praise you, Lord, more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all the day long, for I know no end of the telling. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O oh God, when I am old and grey-headed, till I make known your deeds to the next generation and your power to all that are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. In the great things you have done, who is like you, O God? What troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you will turn and refresh me, and bring me from the deep of the earth again. And so let us pray. Faithful Lord, living Saviour, in youth and old age, from the womb to the grave, may we know your protection and proclaim your great salvation to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So our um, New Testament reading today, uh, Acts 22, and this comes um, from a passage in Acts uh, where uh, Paul has returned to Jerusalem. Um, he's been arrested, um, and he. I'm trying to cut a long story short. He is given the opportunity, despite being under arrest, to speak uh, to the people. And he recounts the story of his conversion, which we're probably fairly familiar with. But I'm going to pick up at verse 12, because that's where, if you like, um, what he tells us of that experience possibly differ slightly from some of the other version versions that Luke recounts in Acts. So picking up at verse 12 of chapter 22. A man named Ananias came to see me. This is Paul and he's still blind at this stage. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very moment I was able to see him. Then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptised and wash your sins away, calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance, continues Paul, and saw the Lord speaking. Quick, he said to me, leave Jerusalem immediately, because they will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these men know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I stood there, giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away 
to the Gentiles. There's um, a huge amount to connect with through the readings this morning and the Old Testament reading this morning is um, Naboth's Vineyard. Um, and at the end of Naboth's Vineyard, um, the king is forgiven by God for his and his wife's behaviour, Jezebel, um, in killing Naboth to gain the vineyard. Um, the king puts on sackcloth and ashes. And here, Paul, after his experience of meeting with Jesus on the road to Damascus, of being um, given his sight back by God um, through Ananias, through what was probably a pretty brave act by Ananias, who um, must have struggled to trust Saul in the circumstances. Um, but he, he returns to Jerusalem, which is the place where he lived, where he's speaking from now in chains. Um, and he's incredibly penitent before, before God. He goes to his, um, I guess his safe place, um, the temple, would have been very familiar to him. Um, he goes to the temple and it says he fell into a trance but he falls into a state of mind where he can hear God um, and that's really important how often do we put ourselves in a place um, physically mentally where we can hear the Lord speaking. Um, God is very realistic um, and it's quite noticeable how realistic he is. You know, God, God, the Lord speaks and says, quick, leave Jerusalem immediately because they won't accept your testimony. Um, they didn't accept Jesus' testimony and Paul was part of that so he probably should have realised one guesses but God God meets us where we're at he meets us in our safe places he meets us when we give time um, to um, listen to him um, whatever activity is, is best done um, to create that space for God to speak and God is realistic about the issues that we're going to face. Something which struck me as pertinent to our two parishes at the moment. God knows what we face. God knows what the options are. God knows um, that we're going to feel challenged by the situation we're going to face. And God is realistic about what it is that he expects of us but he may well surprise us and I don't think for a moment that Paul expected to be the apostle to the Gentiles he is sent far away to the Gentiles God puts him in a place of physical safety or comparative safety. Um, he has a specific purpose for the situation. He has uh, a purpose for having met Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, it wasn't some whim. This is God's will. Um, and he forgives us from whatever has gone before, um, like the king in Naboth's story. 
like Paul here, who is obviously very well aware of the role that he played in Stephen's death and the treatment of others. And yet God is faithful. God has work for him to do. God has work for us to do. And he will be realistic about us at about it and he will support us in it so those are the things that struck me this morning obviously part of what we do when we look at scripture is look at it in the light of what we are um, mentally en encountering and so it has a certain nuance to it this morning um, but hopefully that will be an encouragement to all of us both as um, parishes and as individuals in our own lives. But do, I encourage you, take time, um, as I have done in recent months and need to continue to do whatever happens, to find those safe spaces to listen to God. Mm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord and with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And the Benedictus, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I'm going to use a form of prayers. That is quite um, simple, but also gives us space to pray in silence uh, for the needs of ourselves and the needs of the world. That this day may be holy, good and joyful. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord bless us in all that we have to do today. Bless those that we encounter. Be it family at home or others 
further afield. Bless us in our journeyings, whatever they might be, however mundane they might seem. Help us to find joy and holiness, your presence, O Lord, in all that we do. That we may offer to you our worship and our work, we pray to you, O Lord. Our worship, Lord, is how we give you worth, worthship. Our work might be things that we have been given to do or tasks that we have taken upon ourselves. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us, speak to us and enable us to give you worth. That we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray to you, O Lord. As I can sense the sun beginning to break through outside. We thank you for your creation. For the joys of calm, sunny days in autumn. For the colours. the productivity of the land, the hedgerows, all that we encounter around us. Lord, help us to be stewards of your creation wisely and giving you the glory. that in the pleasures and pains of life we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord. We remember those we know of who are in pain, be that um, mental anguish, some sort of physical pain or illness. We pray for them for healing, for encouragement, for patience, for rest. And we pray particularly today for John, after Joan's death, for their family all round the world. For all those who grieve for Joan's friendship. give thanks for Joan as your faithful soldier and servant in prayer and commend her to you. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints and trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord, and commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God.
Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray in confidence together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to you three and to others who may join us during the course of the day um, for your faithfulness in prayer. Lovely to see you online, Jeanette, and I suspect others will pick this up during the day. Go well. God bless. See you soon.